What's going on everyone? This is Jay from Premier Gaming Entertainment and I know this looks a little bit different. Um, normally I'm decked out in my Michigan gear but uh, I'm stuck at work and I wanted to post this video before it gets too late. I'm probably not going to be home for at least another you know four or five hours. I didn't want to wait that long while I had this game fresh on my mind. So I wanted to give you my takeaways and analysis video for the game that's gone final, you know, us versus Ohio. Um, leave me a comment in the comment section below. What did you think about the game? Were you surprised by the outcome? Um, let me know how you felt about the game in the comment section below. So first, I just want to get a few things out the way. Um, one, I was actually pretty close on my prediction as far as uh, Ohio State and how much they were going to score. I think I had said this, the outcome was going to be 28 to 24. Well, they scored 23, so I was pretty close on that. I had no idea that we'd put up 45. So that was very, very interesting. Also, I want to get out the way. I know a lot of people last year said it was a fluke that we beat Ohio State. So, you know, if you do it twice in a row and you do it in conven convincing fashion two years in a row and the second game you do it on the road, I think we can put that it was a fluke that we won last year to rest. Also, the excuse of, oh, well, we won because... It was it was the weather conditions. It was snowing and cold. Well, today was about fifty something degrees. Not a cloud in the sky. No wind. So we can put that excuse to bed. We heard C.J. Stroud was sick last year at the flu, and that that uh, you know caused him to not have a good game, and that's why they didn't win. Well, he was perfectly healthy th this year, so you know, we can put that to rest as well. Um, you know, this was not a fluke for this game, obviously. For Michigan to go on the road in a hostile environment, a place that they haven't won since, what, 2000? And actually win in more convincing fashion this year than they did last year? You know, score more three, more score more points in three than we did last year, and then give up less points, twenty three to twenty seven last year. You know, it just goes to show that. You know, this this is not a flute. This is this is something that's going to continue to happen, as it looks like. Now, obviously, things change from year to year, and, and you know. You know, next year could be different, but this is trending more in the favor of Michigan, just by the way that these games have been been going. So, you know, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I was not expecting the game to be in a blowout fashion. You know, like it was in our favor, like that. Did I think that we're that we were gonna lose? No. But, you know, I was seeing all these scores, obviously by, you know, these Ohio State Buckeye fans saying that we're going to get annihilated and blown off the field and we're going to lose by two or three scores and it wasn't going to be competitive. I mean, I mean, I understand that you guys are fans and stuff like that, but I was at least expecting at a bare minimum it was going to be a close game. I didn't think that we were going to get blown out. And, you know, we started off kind of slow. I'm not sure, you know, looking back on now, it doesn't matter because we won. But I was kind of confused as why we won the toss and chose to defer. That's typically not what Harbaugh would do. But this game, for whatever reason, he did. And, you know, it is what it is. But, um,. You know, overall, the, the team played really, really well. Um, 
you know, Blake Corum didn't, he played, obviously, he gave it a go, but he just didn't have it in him. And in the end, it didn't even matter. Donovan Edwards definitely took up the slack. And regardless of Ohio State knowing that that's what we're going to do, we still ran it down their throats. I said in my previews video that whoever dominates the line of scrimmage is going to win this game. And early on, I will admit that Ohio State was, you know, kind of winning that line of scrimmage battle. But in the second half, all Michigan. And let's face it, this team is easily the best second half team in the whole country. I know a lot of people laughed at all these other games where we put up the stats of and the scores of all the other teams that we dominated in the second half. And everyone laughed and said, oh, but it's only this team, there's only that team. Well, Ohio State, second ranked team in the whole entire country, only scored three points in the second half. So I guess we'll just add that to the total. Three points in the second half. Michigan, 28. Whatever they do in the halftime with the adjustments that they make, man, it's just it's just clicking on all cylinders, and it doesn't seem like it matters who it doesn't matter who they play. The, the they're just that second half. I was, when we went in, we we're we we're trailing twenty to seventeen. I was happy. I mean, obviously, I'm not happy that we were losing, but I was happy that it, the game was within reach, and I knew that the way that we've been playing all year in the second half that if we were close within a score, that we had this. And I was right. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm, just, I, I'll be, I'm just surprised that we were able to pull it out the way that we did. I will say that the defense played really, really well. Um, holding Ohio State to 23 points is doing a great, great job. I mean, and especially 23 points, and it wasn't like the Northwestern game where the wind was howling and swirling and they couldn't throw the football. It was perfect weather conditions. So you can't hang it on the weather as the reason why they only scored 23 points. They only scored 23 points because of Michigan's defense. So, you know, um, there's not really much more to say on that other than, you know, what I'm saying right now. Um, no, I, I take that back. I'm going to talk about the offense. So, you know, all year we've been hearing that Michigan can't throw the football. Um, you know, that J.J. sucks and, you know, he... He's a pedestrian, average, below average quarterback. Well, J.J. was on display for this game and still missed some throws, had a couple drops, but J.J. can throw the football. Surprise, surprise. Michigan can hit the deep ball. Surprise, surprise. Five plays over 45 yards. A um, couple of bombs to Cornelius Johnson, who stepped up for this game and had a huge game. And just overall, the game plan, you know, it, it just worked out really well. I know a lot of you know, people are saying, you know, Ohio State's secondary is suspect, and, but Michigan won't be able to take advantage of that because they can't throw the football. Well, they took advantage of that. So... It's not that they can't throw the football. Um, you know, they just, for whatever reason, certain things weren't clicking. But I've always felt that they had the ability. And that was on full display this, for this game. Um, sucks that Blake Horham is injured. Um, you know, it's going to be on to the Big Ten Championship game. Interested to see who it's going to be from... What I'm seeing is probably going to be Purdue. 
but you never know. And at this point in time, I mean, worst case scenario, I think because of this win, we're already shooting in for the college football playoff. So it's going to be interesting to see where they seed us. It should be number two. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens with TCU. If they're going to win their game, they should. So it might be us versus TCU in the first championship game. And then Georgia versus whoever makes it in in the, in the number four slot. Um, it might be Ohio State. You know, I just clicked on the message board and saw a lot of, you know, people clowning on Ohio State, but they still have an opportunity to get in. The only thing that might be a problem is the fact that the game wasn't close. They got blown out at home, so that might work against them. But if, because uh, Clemson lost, if USC loses, and then LSU loses in the either in this game or in the SEC championship game, there's a chance that Ohio State could still sneak back in as the number four seed. We just have to wait and see. But I'm really happy for the outcome of the game. Uh, never in doubt, you know, all the experts picked us to lose. Um, you know, not even lose a close game. Losing double figures. The only person I saw, um, that I saw anyways, that picked us win was Charles Woodson. Obviously, he's going to not pick against Wood, uh, against the Wolverines. But, you know, everyone else counted us for dead, thought that we were going to lose. But, hey, it's the same thing that happened last year. So, go figure. So, um, on to the next game. We're 12-0. And we just look forward to whoever we're going to play in the Big Ten Championship game. So anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. Um, if you liked the video, definitely please feel free to leave a like on the video. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, leave, if you got this far, leave me a go blue in the comment section below. And uh, if you like my content, definitely subscribe to the channel. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. And as always, go blue.